can we take out some time to take in the sun before the winter comes it's really sunny you actually want to be a data analyst <sighs> i mean it's all it's good it has its nice advantage you know i mean you're literally like i mean you're not being called like a tech bro in texas even if that's true but you know being a data analyst is literally it's a job on its own it's a career it's an occupation in its own right so i'm gonna talk about why in all sincerity and I, like this means speaking right and um just let you know some of the things you may face in the field as a data analyst so i'm speaking as to why you shouldn't be a data analyst hey everyone welcome back to my channel and if you're just stopping by you know what you're most definitely welcome and if you're a returning subscriber i am so glad to have you here so today i'll be sharing based on my experience why you should not be a data analyst and now just like any other job whether as an engineer or a teacher a doctor or a lawyer the field of data analytics also has its own cons right but then if i go on disclaimer please ensure to take every advice i put in here with a grain of salt because it's now based on my experience right in my career journey in here so now the first point is you're constantly learning guys you are constantly learning i mean i can't even stress this enough in the field of data analytics or tech in general you're constantly in a space where you're skilling you're reskilling you're relearning and you're literally unlearning now i came from a fintech startup which churned a lot of data but way less data than my current company which is larger bigger and serves render to customers right and we have a large customer base as well too so in essence that means a change of technologies and tools that will be used to cater for such massive amounts of data and yeah i'm currently learning the use of tools and technologies in the modern data stack right and now this includes snowflake google Luca, dbt and so on and this is because working in a fast-growing company also incorporates the use of modern data stack to automate processes and systems right so now every single every company is different and that means that um whatever tool is being used in company a varies from what tool is being used in company b so it's better you actually understand that when you're coming to this space you need to have an open mindset to learn new tools as um technology evolves in our entirety or the business new also evolves too now the second point is if you do not have the patience because debugging and queuing is one thing you just have to do as a data analyst like literally the bugs will bug you and sometimes it takes days it takes weeks to fix an sql query and sometimes you're even like you're not even like getting the expected outputs as you should or maybe you're even looking through someone else's query and you just don't even get it frankly speaking and now also knowing that you're a data analyst your results are literally the final source of truth right for making business decisions you literally have to be thorough and now this is one thing that cannot be avoided so at times like this, right, for me as a person, when I when this occur, I'll just, you know, I'll just step away from my laptop and I'll come back at it and I'll look at the error from a new perspective. Now, the third point is dealing with imposter syndrome. Whew, I think I've had my fair share. Like, can I even be real with you guys? You literally have to have a tough, tough skin in this space or just have to prove that you're actually the right person for this job and it's a lot right so even mentally and emotionally it's it's frankly a lot and i think i've had my first share um having to just prove that you're worth the job you're worth even being considered for this role and not even second guessing yourself at all that's one thing you're literally constantly dealing even before you even get the job even while on the job as well too you literally have to prove yourself and I think it's something that men who don't really talk a lot about in this field so sometimes it feels like tech is actually glamorous but having to deal with imposter syndrome is something that a lot of people should also speak about right for those who are planning to come into this space even as a data analyst because it is real like sometimes self-doubt will come in but then what do you do when that happens right and i remember all these points i'm giving you are uh, from my own point of view right so please remember to give me a grain of salt right and imposter syndrome according to um hbr is referred to inadequacies that persist right despite evident success so you know that feeling that comes when you just got into a new role or you're your first job as a data analyst and you're tasked with a project that seems way above your skills and then you start wondering am i fit for this job is it am i right for this job am i want this job now this feeling is valid right 
and sometimes it rides its head how and you have to deal with it sometimes you literally have to question yourself whether you're worth even being in this company in the first place and that's one thing that a lot of us actually do do in here as a data analyst that's one thing that <laughs> if you're coming into this field you literally need to wear a tough skin and know what you're preparing for ahead of time but in all sincerity that does occur and Especially if you're just starting a new role, literally, you're really thinking, okay, I might want to be on this job, right? Do I know what I'm even doing here as well too? So all this happens. Now another point is actually trying something new, so more like exploring, right? With every day or even with every project that comes, you're literally having to find a new way in tackling a challenge that may occur. Now this could even be optimizing your query, right, to reduce low, low time. So here yeah, in this field as data analyst is an evolving cycle of new things occur you need to know how to make things better than how it was before even having to even rebuild your dashboard entirely so there's always a so almost like you're 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 just doing something better than it was before so you're literally not entirely reinventing the wheel but you're literally just creating something new out of what is probably existing just to ensure that you're evolving with a new cycle of things right so in this space it's more like an evolving cycle of um new things and also exploring ways to make things more efficient to reduce low time to ensure that your dashboard looks beautiful to ensure that um the processes needed to even have this data being sent across or even this report being sent across to your end users are, are much more effective right so there are different things that may occur in this space or sometimes you don't have to see that when errors occur how well how well can you fix this um, error before it even occurs in the first place now the very next point is communication right and um now this is because as a journalist um for example let's say you're working in a team of 12 people and after a daily stand up you're literally having to also relate to other people in your team or even external stakeholders maybe in the product team or in the mobile marketing team or whatever department or unit you work with right that require for you to uh, build out a new report so you're literally having to also also be in constant communication with people especially for someone who is not really open in communicating um, I mean, that's something that you need to learn how to do on the job because you need to know how to communicate your findings and how to also resolve issues in terms of like data descript discrepancies if that may also occur. So literally in this field, you're literally having to communicate with people, communicate with external stakeholders, also communicate your reports and findings who will be using your dashboard eventually or your reports eventually and also communicate your findings as well too. So here yeah, in this space, you need to learn how to communicate and if that's not your forte, you should know that coming in here as a data analyst would is one thing that you should actually learn how to do or build while on this job because also be presenting your facts your facts and findings right so it's also very important that while you're on this job once you should know is that you're literally also communicating you're presenting your findings as well to text and stakeholder thank you to all my amazing subscribers and for your comments literally it's glad to know that i have everyone person who is literally watching this and making career decisions based on my videos right in terms of learning improving, improving on, the, on themselves and i'm so excited to be in the same journey as well with you helping you get started in the field of data and if you've not watched my previous video you should literally go and watch it because i think i'm able to give you like some certain insights as to what you need to start a career as a data analyst right and please always ensure to like my videos literally goes a long way for me as a person and also for youtube algorithms please ensure to like if you haven't liked yet please like on my videos comment engage with it and please ensure to also share with those in your network as well too.